Welcome to today's video, which is intended to help you get set up by creating a data package. And the way I wanted to start with that was by giving you all the parts and pieces for that data package. So you could be kind of working through it and then think about doing the same thing when you have your own data package to create. So uh, I want you to start by making sure you have the files. This is step one uh, in the disk golf underscore files folder. Um, I'm going to put a link to that on the uh, YouTube video, so you'll be able to track that down as well. And then I want step two is I want you to confirm that you successfully installed a personal access token. So to do that, I'm going to run the use this package and the git sit rep. And this will just confirm that I have a personal access token. It's not showing it to you. That would be a security problem. Um, but this is able to kind of connect into GitHub. That personal access token is working. Um, so step three is to create a new project. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a new project in our studio. I'm going to click here on new project. This is going to be in a new directory. And I want to. Um, put this together in our package using dev tools. And so our package using dev tools will do some things. It'll just make it a little bit easier for us to be creating a package. I want to call this disk golf is the name of my package. I'm going to put the package as a subdirectory of, um, of my, uh, my Git folder. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. It's gone ahead and added some files in there. And it's now opening up this session. And you can see this is a session that's now set up uh, with Git installed. This is, has a build tab that we'll be using in a few minutes. Um, and in fact, I'm going to start this off by configuring the build tools and just make sure that this generate doxygen, the documentation with Roxygen is set. That's all configured the way we want it. And um, we can go ahead and click OK. So now step three is completed. We now have the build and the Git tab. So we want to start to edit the files in our package. Um, I'm going to do that by first editing this description file. Now the description file is what um, tells R what the package is, what it's designed to do, how it's organized, etc. And so we need to update a couple things. We need to tell it what the title is, um, the author of the package, and also the description. And I'm going to copy these files from um, um, the, the default that I set up. And um, this is a sample data package. Um, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to simplify the version number. I think that the four levels there is a little bit too much. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file. You can see my license is now um, set up. Um, and um, um, so to put a license in, it says use MIT license. But if I just run use this, use MIT license to, to figure out what licensing I'll be having for this data package, you'll see it gives me a, a message that I need to first tell use this what my name is. So I can say options use this dot full name, uh, Nicholas Horton. So I could have done this um, in my dot R profile file, but wanted to kind of demonstrate for you. So I've now set that option, and now I can run the use MIT license, and you'll see that line 11 will then get modified, where we now have MIT plus file license. You should look into a little bit more if you have something that you really care about the licensing. Here, this is just a toy package I'm setting up um, to let people see. So um, step five was to kind of change those, um, save those descriptions and add the license. Step six, it's a data package, so we need to start to add some data into it. We can do this by using the use data raw function in use this. And what's nice about this, it will create the files that we need in a straightforward way. So when I run this, you can see it's creating a new folder called data raw. And within that folder is this file called dataset.r. And it's telling us that our next task is to modify data-raw slash dataset.r. So this is a file that will take whatever unprocessed you know, um, source files that are in data raw and turn them into native R files that are available in the data folder that will get created. 
So um, I bring us back to this main package here um, and we can kind of see how this is set up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead to the disk golf files that I have and I'm gonna grab the information that's in the um, dataset.r that I've provided for, for your use. And I'm gonna replace all these commands and it will end line 22 with the use this function where I'm saying use data with this new object called disc golf. And that's the object that we're gonna be using uh, that gets created through these lines. The other part here is that we need to um, read in the data. And so we need to also copy the data. So if I go back to the data raw folder, you can see data set that R is here, but there's nothing else. I'm gonna go ahead now and copy in the files into this uh, disk golf folder, into the data raw folder, um, this CSV file. So that's now here. This is here. Um, I can save this file. But the other thing I need to do, if I look right now and my current working directory is in the main project folder. To be in this, if I'm gonna read CSV from that file, I need to be in that data raw folder. So the way I'm gonna do that is by opening the session menu. Under that, there's set working directory. And I'm gonna set the working directory to be the source file location. So now that's put into place, I'm in this place. And now um, step eight uh, is to change that and then run source. So, so this source button here will source the contents of this active file, dataset.r. Um, and when that runs, you'll see it will create a new folder here called data. So I'm gonna click once on source. You can see it's done various things. It's created this file called folder called data. Within that is discgolf.rda. We're making progress. So this is, this is good. So um, step nine, check that the data folder now contains discgolf.rda. That's great. Well, the next step is it's saying that we need to document our data. And the way that we document our data um, uh, is gonna be on step 10 by going to a different folder, the R folder. It may feel counterintuitive, but the Roxygen setup that we're using um, here is going to be using this R folder as a place to stash these commands. Um, so I need to now copy the um, discgolf.r file into um, this folder, the r folder. And you can see um, it's there now. And discgolf.r we can, we can open and you can see it's just a text file in a particular format, hashtag uh, quote space, various commands, for example, documentation type, these are tags the golf disks package um, and that um, um, is, is putting this uh, together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just rename this disk golf. Um, and so it's giving us this data set of golf disks um, that we have a little bit later. There's 1,260 of them. There's the code book that put together in various ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. Um, and then step 11, we've done a lot of work so far. Now we need to start to kind of put things into GitHub control. And so pretty much I'm gonna pick, you know, add all of these files. We can talk about whether it makes sense to install the gitignore, the discgolf.rproj. Um, in general, those you can make a decision about, but the rest of them we need to add into the mix and to have these available. I'm gonna go ahead and commit these files and it's gonna ask me for commit message, adding initial files for my data package. It's probably not a terrible commit message. It's going ahead and added those files in there. Um, and there we go. So there's a couple of the other things we need to be doing. I'm just gonna, um, for um, better safety, sorry, I'm gonna run the use this um, double colon use git uh, function. This is step 12 on my instructions. Um, it's asking me, it's made some slight changes to get ignore. Is it okay to commit them? And I say, sure, yes, I agree. And so it's now committed that file. And then step 13 is to run the use this, use GitHub function. Now here is where this is gonna make the connection between the files locally that have been committed 
and my um, you know, main GitHub repo. So it's saying that the current branch is, is master. Um, eventually that's gonna be moving to main as GitHub kind of moves from the old, um, less appropriate naming of master as the main um, branch within a packet, a GitHub repo. I'm gonna pick HTTPS here. Um, I could also do it with SSH keys, but um, this just seems like it's relatively simpler. Um, and it's telling me, unfortunately, I already have this um, package. So let me just go ahead. I've been testing this out in various ways. Let me delete that. Great. Through, so through the magic of a little bit of pausing on the video, I can now run again, use this, um, use GitHub. It asks me, are these descriptions okay? Flying objects officially approved for use in competition looks good. So I'm going to say three for sure. It will now go ahead and create the GitHub repository. It'll set the remote, it'll make those other connections in there, and it will also pop open the website where we can now start to see how this is structured and organized. So everything is now here in the way that we'll need for, um, for some of our later work. Um, great, so that was step 13. Um, so now we can start to kind of do some other checks on the system. So check four, step 14 is we want to, to open up the build tab and run the check function. And this check function um, will kind of step through various parts and pieces, make sure that the documentation's in reasonable place, that the objects are all where they say they'll be, that everything is kind of you know hunky-dory in terms of uh, running the package. And you can see we have a note here, but no warnings, no errors. So everything seems to be just fine. Um, um, oh, it's saying that I have a malformed description. So let's go back to my description and, um, and fix that. So my description, this is a sample data package from, um, um, that sounds great. So I could put a, um, it um, provides access to some flying disks. Okay, so I'm going to run this and then go ahead and run check one more time. See if it's happier that I now have sentences. Again, we want to have consistency in packages. There's, you know, many more than 16,000 of them at this particular point in time that are on CRAN, many others in other places. Um, but we can now see we pass with flying colors. So step 14 is good. So now I can do um, the install and restart. Um, this is going to be a, a, a installation, make sure things are there. And now I have the disc golf running. If I type disc golf at the console now, since I've loaded the package, it will show me um, the information about the discs. Um, great, so we've actually got the package installed. There's some other bells and whistles we can use. Uh, the first one I'm going to do right now is the use um, readme underscore rmd and what this will do is it'll create a file um, that we have um, in here called uh, readme.rmd the goal of the disc golf package is to tell people about these great discs um, you can install it actually not from cran we can say you can install it from github with the command um, so this is going to be remotes, um, install GitHub, and we need to say Nicholas J. Horton slash, um, oh, there it is already. Um, you can install, I can just get rid of that, uh, could have saved me some typing. Um, and then we have just some kind of simple, simple little thing here. So um, for example, summary disk golf. Um, would let us get started. And so the nice part of this, this lets us add some other kind of uh, bits and pieces in here. So um, step 18, I'm going to go ahead and save this and knit it. And when I knit this file, it'll go ahead and create a readme.md file that kind of shows what the variables are in there, does some of these other parts and pieces. And now you can see in uh, this file here, I have a readme.rmd and a readme.md. So I can go ahead and now um, modify these things and kind of put them into um, Git one more time and go ahead and um, 
get that set up and going to do that commit. And here we have adding the files for README and other modifications. Okay, great. So that's that looks good. I can close that. I can go ahead and push those changes. Make sure they're reflected on um, on the GitHub side. Um, we can also add a vignette. This is often a nice thing to do. So I'm going to say use this use vignette. I'm going to call my intro to disc golf. Um, and so this vignette will get set up. Oop, it doesn't like that. So let me move um, and um, intro to get disc golf. There we go. So now it's added this file. I, I don't want to have, um, you know, this vignette will eventually be used to provide some examples of how to use the package. Great, so I have that for right now. I can save that. We can also go in and um, include the vignette in there. I can commit um, adding stub of a vignette. So that seems okay. I can push those changes. Um, so then um, I also have um, step 21. We can automate some of these procedures. And so the way I'm gonna automate some of them is I want to create a GitHub action. So I'm going to say use GitHub action. And the action I want is check standard. And check standard will go ahead and create this check standard.yaml file file. And we can now see that in here as well. Um, if we go into um, the um, in our GitHub folder here in our workflows, we can see what the what this looks like. What it says is whenever we push or have a pull request that we accept, um, we'll run this R command check and it'll run on a couple of different operating systems and just check to make sure everything is running okay for us to install this package. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and um, commit these changes, adding our GitHub action. Um, and there we go. So I'm going to close that and push this at this point. Um, and, you know, another thing we can be doing at this point is we can also make sure that we can install from, um, from GitHub. So I can be saying remotes install GitHub. So Nicholas J. Horton disc golf. So this is actually, once I type it correctly, um, going to go to the web rather than the local files that I have. This is our kind of final test that everything is working. Um, okay, well, this is great. Let's go back one, one quick look to see how things are proceeding on the disc golf package. Um, we have these commits put into place. We can also look to see here what's going on. We have this GitHub action, which has started. Um, and, you know, assuming that this will be set up, I can go ahead and create a status badge. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy that status badge from here. And then I can go back into our studio and into my readme.rmd file. And where it has this information on top about the badges, I can just paste this in here. And so when I go ahead and um, um, you know knit this file one more time, create a new readme.md, um, uh, this will automatically, as we go, will update the status. So I'm going to go ahead now and um, make, these, um, make these changes, commit these files uh, to GitHub as well, adding in the status badges. OK, so um, last but not least, I have these changes that have been pushed. I can go ahead and come back um, into um, my disc golf. Um, and we can see there's now a couple of different active jobs that are that are running. Um, and so I'm just going to pause this for right now um, because we want to um, kind of start to see where we're uh, where we're going. Things are queued up. So let me just pause the video for a minute. So success. Things are working, that GitHub Actions are giving us that badge when I look back there. And I can also go ahead and check out the documentation for my new package. 
I say question mark disc golf and it tells me here are the discs and here's the information about them along with that source. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Um, again, there's lots of steps to it, but I think it's worthwhile. Anytime you can start to pull things together into a data package. Enjoy. <laughs>